What's going to stop another team from doing it if they know they're just going to you lose draft picks? And wait a minute, show chat room said says uh, Major League Base Baseball should have stripped them of their World Series. Cause all the teams, uh, cause all the teams they play are going to feel the same way. It wasn't enough. Exactly. I don't even know if this is possible or not, because obviously it'll be odd numbers. I wouldn't even been opposed to Major League Baseball just saying, you know what? Y'all can sit on the sideline and we'll roll this season uh, without you. And I'm pretty sure they couldn't do that because, you, you know, players still got to get paid and all that. But it definitely should have been uh, a, a stiffer penalty. It definitely should have been something uh, that they should be made. They should have been made an example out of, so other teams in the future couldn't. Chris Webber took some money, and well, allegedly, but took some money. And they took down the banners at Michigan, and Michigan banned him from coming up to the school. Let that, let that sink in. And these individuals for the Houston Astros lost a draft pick. It's money. It wasn't enough. But... It may be not the actual street justice, but maybe some street justice uh, that the league is going to have and the players are going to have for the Houston Astros. And it, I mean, that's what you got to deal with. You put yourself in that situation. Now, don't be throwing at people's heads or anything like that, but it might be a little bit tougher than normal out there uh, in MLB world. So we're going to take one more break. When we come back from the break, I want to talk about, uh, we were talking about opt-outs from players. Well, someone's opt-out has opted out, and they're not even a professional yet. Who are we talking about? I'll tell you about that. And more on the other side. It's the Wait a Minute Show. We'll discuss it in just a few minutes. If Low Pan hits the button. That, yeah, little pan, that means you wake up, hit the button. Jeez, think this guy, never mind. We'll be back, ladies and gentlemen. We all hate when we have unexpected car problems. Well, I am here to tell you about a viable solution. Bay 11 Auto and my man, Melvin. You have emission problems? Brakes need changing? Transmission slipping? Is your car just driving sluggish? No problem is too big. I live on the other side of town and I drive over an hour to a guy that I trust. Melvin is honest, dependent, and definitely not in the business to break your pockets. Come see the official mechanic, Melvin, at Bay 11 Auto. You will be glad you did. You can reach him at 1455 General Arts Road, Conyers, Georgia, or 404-295-5715. That's 404-295-5715. We don't take orders from super fools. We give them give it to you. any and all resistance to crumble. Nonsense. There's never been a threat. Couldn't handle. It is the purpose of the squad to align our infamous forces against the powers of good and defeat them, leaving us the rulers of the world. <laughs> Do you like making an impression? Who doesn't? Well, when you want to dress to impress for less, check out Rail Scott at Prime Ties to Go on Facebook and Instagram. Quality accessories for men and women at low, count it low prices. Everything from ties, bow ties, watches, bracelet, earrings, to pocketbooks. Don't miss out. Check out Rail Scott, the owner, at Prime Ties to Go. That's Prime Ties, the number two, go on Facebook and Instagram. The future of radio. 
Yo, what's good? This is Trey Frazier on the staff. This is the Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. Make sure y'all tune in to us every Tuesday night, 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. He's the brain of operations. I'm telling you right now, book it! And him, he's along for the ride. But together, they bring you sports like you've never heard before. The Wait a Minute Show, a new way of discussing today's trending sports topics. And now, back to the show with your host, Jolani J.B. Bodie. Indeed! Indeed, Lupin. Uh, indeed. Yeah, during the break, uh, there was another comment in the Wait a Minute Show chat room that said, Who said Reggie Bush parents got a house? He lost his Heisman. USC got stripped of the 2004 National Championship. Yes, that, that is facts. Uh, but you took some draft picks away. Jeez. It's right there for you, Major League Baseball. It's set up. All you got to do is knock it down. And you're whiffed on it. Jeez. So I was talking about before the break, someone who is going to opt out, but they're not a professional. Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech cornerback uh, Caleb Farley uh, has decided that he is going to forego his season uh, in college and opt out and actually will start just focusing on training for the NFL draft for next year for 2021. Get ready. Now, we talked before about how guys in, in college were not playing the bowl games because they wanted to, you know, get prepared uh, for the next level in the NFL. And I was kind of stuck in the middle, but I kind of, you know, really didn't have a problem with, you know, someone who has an opportunity to alter their life, to alter the trajectory of where they could go in the world, in their career. So, it's no different. It's no different. He's making the decision that is the best decision for himself. Uh, He has already talked about how he's lost a parent and he doesn't want to, you know, uh, risk the chance of losing another parent. And I totally get it. You know, look, Rutgers, Michigan State, uh, well, I think Clemson, uh, other schools have all reported. Uh, Texas, uh, school after school after school after school is being reported that you know these kids are contracting uh, this COVID nineteen, and he doesn't want to take that chance. Now you ask, hey, okay. It, it, How's this going to pan out for him? Well, he was already a potential uh, first round pick and he was already potentially a, uh, you know, the best corner that was going to be coming out. That's not going to change. He's not sitting out because of an injury. He's not rehabbing. He's training. And here's what I say. Here's the other thing, you know, that's totally different than, uh, than basketball. Go watch his tape. Because you can't leave college and, and uh, declare for the draft until you're three years removed from school. So this kid got at least two years of tape. Go back and look at the tape if you got something. He's already a potential first-round draft pick. What can he do more to other than depend on who the team is? He might move up their draft board because we don't know how the season is going to play out. The team may not need a corner. And then they may not take them, but it could be a team that do need a corner that has a high draft pick, and then they will take them. So he's not losing anything in my eyes, you know, on this. He's being smart. Uh, He's protecting his family. He's protecting himself. And he's actually uh, protecting his future. So I'm hoping no one really has, you know, problems with this. But I bring this up because this, this will not be the only situation that we, you know, hear. There's going to be other kids that's going to opt out to focus on the NFL draft for next year because they don't want to risk it. 
They don't want to risk it. Some of these kids are just in place, or you know, uh, in a position to be able to do that. And we have to, res- you know, respect that. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the ACC has uh, released the schedule. They decided what they were going to do. We were talking about this earlier about how the Big Ten uh, only went to conference conference only games. Uh, Pac-12 joined that. Uh, the Ivy League actually just suspended all fall sports, uh, so that you won't have any, you know, sports in, in the Ivy League coming up. So we were really waiting. It was the ACC was looked at to be joining, and where everyone was waiting on the SEC, which is obviously the best uh, conference that's out there. But ACC has decided that they're going to go. It's an 11 game schedule. They got 10 uh, conference game, and they're going to schedule one. Uh, uh, unconference game, but then you know they get to play that at home. Interesting piece on this. It's been over 130 years, but Notre Dame is finally a part of a conference. So <laughs> involuntarily, uh, probably more than anything, but they are joining the ACC, and here's why they're joining the ACC. Notre Dame has never been the football team. You know, other, you know, uh, other sports there has, but Notre Dame has never been associated with a football conference or, uh, yeah, a football conference. They've been their own independent conference. But because you had so many people going to conference only, well, guess who didn't have a conference to conference? And that was Notre Dame. So it's going to be interesting playing in the ACC. Uh, it's going to be interesting in, you know, some of the games that they're going to, uh, be playing and who they're going to be playing against. So that if, if we get some college football, that, uh, will be some interesting matches, matchups. Now the SEC also has been reported to, uh, be looking at a 10 game conference only, uh, season as well. So, uh, I think they're just running over the logistics. Uh, they're probably running over, you know, how everything is going to work. I'm sure they've already decided uh, on that. It makes sense. Everybody is already doing it, and we really don't know uh, from day to day, you know, what what something is. Because something can happen uh, today, tomorrow, two days, three days from now, uh, and then it alters, you know, the game as well. So this is an ongoing process. I think the SEC uh, just, you know, they're going to jump on board. But the ACC, they got their schedule. Notre Dame is on their schedule. That should help out their conference at least for their, uh, one year. It's going to help out Notre Dame so that they can actually play football. And maybe, just maybe, uh, we'll all walk away happy uh, with this thing. Um, hopefully, healthy and happy. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I know. I I didn't get. I didn't do a big L for today. I can't. But you know what? I can give out one. It's not a great big L award. It's kind of. It kind of hurt. Kind of hurt. But it's me. Big L award is going to be. I was told that I hamper. I. Jelani Bodie. Jelani JB Bodie. Let's get that right. I hamper my daughter learning how to swim. I guess because she's comfortable around me and, and, and I don't know. She look at me with the little pretty face and I, I don't know. But they said, JB, back up. Don't don't try and teach her anything else. Let the professionals do it. They're good. Go sit your butt down. So that's what I said. I'm going to sit myself down. But also what I'm going to do, I'm going to sign off. Uh, Here's another episode of the Wait a Minute Show in the books. I am so glad we were able to broadcast again. We apologize for last week's technical difficulties, but we didn't have any uh, this time. So we are good to go uh, for Saturdays, 8 p.m. on the WaitAMinuteShow.com. And also we'll be back here Wednesday again on X Squad Radio uh, Network. What I want you to do, this is this is totally off the top of my head, so it's coming from the heart. What I want you to do, I want you to feel your passion. Not F-I-L-L, F 
E-E-L. Feel your passion.